Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. Coming to you from the Disney Coronado Resort in Orlando, Florida, and we're bringing you the ideal national championship. The top five who will be advancing to the next round. My father's name, step four. Seth Agnew. This job site is an extension of an existing commercial building complex. The existing utility service drop is a 240-120 volt, three-phase, four-wire, delta-connected system. A Siemens 200-amp fused heavy-duty safety switch has previously been installed as the service disconnecting means for this installation. The five competitors who you saw step forward to the finals will be required to complete installation of the electrical service for this building extension, including all wiring and connections for the grounding electrode system. Before starting, the competitors are given this drawing, which shows the 200 amp fused service disconnect that you see on the board and it shows all the other components that they will have to add to the system. This is Greg Anneker. He's the gentleman who won $75,000 in this contest last year for taking first place in the professional individual competition. And the first thing he's done is he's tacked up the drawing onto his board because he needs to work from it. Now Greg has grabbed his two and a half inch cordless bandsaw and he's gone over to work on his two inch rigid conduit. So he's making a mark so where he's gonna cut it and he grabs his bandsaw and watch this, just put it on your foot like that and Cut the two inch rigid. For the competition, all circuits and equipment should be correctly grounded and bonded and all terminals and lugs will need to be torqued down to the correct torque amount. In fact, the competitors will have to write the torque amount used next to each termination within the enclosure. The competitors will also have to use ideal wire armor electrical tape to properly identify all service conductors at all termination points to comply with the requirements of this electrical system. Greg is finishing up cutting the two inch rigid and uh, notice that one of these pieces has a connector on the end of it, just the, the factory end. So he's gonna grab a pair of adjustable pliers and he's gonna tap that fitting on the end of the pipe and take it off with the pliers. And now he's gonna to need to uh, ream out the, both the inside and the outside of this pipe. So he's gonna use a file. The filing is done to keep the cable from getting nicked and perhaps causing a short. The competitors will be working with 100 feet of 3 yacht cable, which you see on the lower part of this table.
Greg has now knocked out the appropriate knockout for two inch rigid pipe. And now he's getting his knockout ready on the other side of the panel as well. Now Greg is going to grab a 6 inch by 2 inch nipple and he's going to get it ready to install on the left hand side of the panel. If you remember just to the left of the panel he is to install a meter enclosure. Then he'll install a 2 inch rigid service riser and on top of that is a weather head. So Greg is getting his hardware together to connect the service disconnect panel to the meter enclosure. And this is the six inch nipple. And he's got it going through the hole that he knocked out. And he's going to be tightening it down to the service disconnect panel. And here he's, he's got his adjustable pliers. He's got it tightened down. Right now Greg is working on the two inch rigid conduit that's going to connect the service disconnect panel to the main lug only panel. A main lug only panel is a panel that can be only used when you have an upstream breaker to protect the panel as we do in this situation. Greg is using an ideal six inch magnetic level. It's an electrician's level and he's got it on the rigid and he wants to get it nice and level so he does an excellent job. Now he's connecting the rigid conduit to a strut that was provided for him. Those are ideal 12 inch tongue and groove pliers and they are made in the USA. Now he's measuring up for his main lug only panel and he's actually going to have to drill a hole in the side of his panel. Now he's going to put an ideal TKO carbide tip electrician's two and a half inch drill bit on his drill and he's got the spot located where he wants to drill it and he's going to drill it in the side of his main lug only panel. The bit has a stop built into it so it won't go all the way through the panel and it has a spring built into it to help eject the piece of metal that you drill out. This is a two inch threadless connector for rigid pipe. On the other side of the rigid pipe, he had the advantage of having threads on his two inch rigid pipe. On this side, there's no threads, so this is a threadless connector. Now it's time to install the main lug only panel, which they call 
MLO for short, MLO panel. And it's very, very important to secure these panels well. And notice that Greg has a six inch magnetic level on top of the panel so that he gets everything nice and level. So he's putting in a screw with a one inch fender washer. It gives better support with the fender washer that way. And all four corners will get a screw with a one inch fender washer. And here's the ideal 12 inch tongue and groove pliers. See there's a, a lock nut inside the, the MLO panel and he's tightening that right up. So I want you to notice he's only used one threaded end of the two inch rigid conduit because he's going to need another threaded end. Okay, right now he's putting on a, a, a plastic bushing. Okay, so that's a plastic bushing, a two inch plastic bushing that goes on the end. It keeps any of the cables from getting nicked. But what I was saying, he's going to need another uh, end that is threaded from that two inch rigid conduit. So he's, he's doing this very wisely. He's only used up one of his threaded ends. The other threaded end will go into a two inch hub that holds what we call the mast. And the mast goes up and on top of that is a weather head. You see he's got a, a six inch two-inch rigid nipple sticking out of the service disconnect. Now Greg needs to knock out the two and a half inch knockout to the meter panel. And it's interesting to see the way he does it. First, he loosens up the smaller one, the one that's just smaller than the two and a half inch knockout. Because you have to realize you only get one chance with these. They only give you one meter panel. And it's the same thing when you're working out in the field. You, you only buy one of these. You can't mess it up. So he's, he's loosened up the smaller knockout. And now he's getting out the two and a half inches, which is what he needs. And he'll get both of these out at once. It's just really important to be safe when you're doing this and not, not blow it. You don't want to accidentally make a larger hole than you need. You just want the right size one. So he's working out the uh, two and a half inch knockout, which is just what he needs. And there it is, he's got it. He's got it. So you guys that do that all the time, you know what I'm talking about. Those things can be a little frustrating sometimes. Okay, so this is the meter enclosure. Now he's taking the top off of the meter enclosure. Okay, he's going to go ahead and put it up. He's got a lock ring in his hand. And he's going to tighten up the lock ring. So, you know, there's, there's only $75,000 on the line here. First place gets $75,000. Second place gets $25,000. Third place gets $10,000. I've been following Greg in this tournament. And he's calm and cool. So he's got the, the fuses right now. Those are three fuses. And they're for the service disconnect. They're big, they're very large fuses. So he's going to take those and put them in the service disconnect. He will actually install them later. And he's got the uh, six inch magnetic level on top of this meter enclosure. And now he's gonna screw in the screws, they're one inch screws, with one inch fender washers. 
and he's going to screw them each into each of the four corners of the meter enclosure. Okay, now this is the hub. It always comes in a separate packet. And you screw in your two inch threaded rigid conduit into this hub. So there's four screws that go in, into each corner of the hub and you screw those down nice and snug because they have to be waterproof. You don't want any water getting into your meter enclosure. So here's the fourth screw and now the rigid conduit is four feet long. Normally the service entrance conduit or mast as we call it is much longer but for the purposes of this competition it'll just be four feet long okay he's got that tightened down and he's gonna mark out where he's going to put his two inch rigid straps And he's going to put a couple of them to secure the mast. If you look at these straps, you can see that there is a 7 8 inch standoff built into them. So this is this is a really good tip. Sometimes people just put some one by underneath a strap, you know, a regular strap. But these, these look much more professional. Okay, here's the second strap. Screw that right to the board. And here comes the mast. Okay, that's a four foot piece of rigid and it's screwing right in there. Normally, you guys put a little sealant on those threads. I do. I always put some sealant on there. But I, I guess it's not necessary. So he's tightening it right up with those 12 inch tongue and groove pliers. Okay, now he gets the nuts and bolts and secures the straps. So that mast isn't right on the board if you if you ever put a mast straight on the side of a house or a building you're going to flunk your inspection it needs to come out and these particular straps are really great because they have a built-in standout and greg's going to grab the little giant ladder. These are really neat ladders. And I'm actually going to be coming out with a video about them. Okay, so Greg's got the ladder about where he wants it. And let's see, I guess he's gonna continue uh, tightening up the straps. 
You need a couple good solid straps and you need that stand out. Boy, inspectors really look for that. And it's gotta be nice and plumb. All right, I think he's gonna go for the weather head. There it is, that's the weather head. Okay. Now you gotta pop some holes through the plastic part for your cables. And he's going to be using three-aught cable. Now when you do this, you don't wanna stab your hand. <laughs> you know, be careful. Now Greg's putting a bushing on the two inch rigid nipple. And it's a special kind of bushing because it's a two inch grounding bushing. This bushing is also a two inch grounding bushing. Now Greg is going to get the panels ready for that 3 aught conduit. This is what the grounding bushing looks like when it's fully assembled. Now Greg's going to get the main lug only panel ready for cable and circuit breakers.
These two three pole breakers will serve 20 amp, 240 volt, three phase motor loads for ventilation fans. Now he'll install a two pole breaker for a multi wire branch circuit which will serve 120 volt service receptacles. He'll install four one pole breakers to serve 20 amp, 120 volt branch circuits for LED lighting. Greg now has an ideal torquing screwdriver in his hand and he's reading the side of the panel because on the side of the panel they have the torquing amounts for the various lugs and fasteners that are found in a panel. The torquing specifications for the breakers themselves are generally found on the breakers. Okay, so Greg has set the uh, torquing specification and now he's torquing down all the breakers. He's going one after another. He's doing it pretty quickly. When it clicks, then, then that's the torquing amount right there. Now Greg is moving over to the service disconnect and he'll be torquing down the various terminals there. And now the same thing in the meter enclosure. Greg is now writing down in the box the torquing specifications that he used. And here next door, here's Seth Agnew. And he's got four 3 eye cables and he's using the ideal ratcheting cable cutter.
Greg is now loosening up the lugs to get them ready to receive the three-aught cable. Now Greg has grabbed the grounding cable and he's going to be rolling that out and getting it ready. This is the three-aught cable that he's getting ready now. And now he's putting the fuses in the service disconnect box. Greg is working with his first piece of 3 aught cable, and he's just stripped an end on it. Now Greg is grabbing the Ideal Wire Armor electrical tape in assorted colors, and he's going to be marking the 3 aught cables with it.
The cables that Greg is installing right now bring the electrical energy from the service disconnect to the main lug only panel. Greg is marking these electrical cables with different colors of electrical tape. This one he's actually marking with black electrical tape. If you can't see that, there's some black electrical tape marking both ends of the cable he was just working on. Now he's working on connecting the ground cable.
This is the SK 3 8 inch torque wrench. It can torque up to 250 foot pounds. Greg needs to torque his lugs down to 275 inch pounds. To convert the inch pounds to foot pounds, you just divide the 275 inch pounds by 12 and you'll get 22.9 foot pounds, which is what his torque wrench is set in. So you just set your torque wrench to 23 foot pounds. This SK torque wrench has a locking collar on it that makes it so it won't change uh, value while you're using it. So Greg is torquing down these lugs. The code that governs the proper torquing of these lugs and connectors in the panels is 2017 article 110.14 D.
Just 14 minutes left. The target time for this competition is 60 minutes. The challenge will be stopped at 70 minutes and points will be deducted from the competitors after the target time. The white tape designates a neutral cable. Now Greg is bringing the neutral cable to the main lug only box. Greg is riding 375 inch pounds for his torquing specs.
Greg is preparing to run his six gauge ground wire to his grounding rods. Greg has stripped off about an inch of insulation from the green grounding wire and he's attaching that to the service disconnect box. The speed that the contestants work at is only worth 10% of the judging. The other 90% of the judging is the quality of the workmanship, how safely the workers work, and the general overall professional appearance of the work. So even if a contestant doesn't finish all the work, he still may win the overall contest because of the professionalism of his work. Now he'll use acorn grounding clamps to clamp the green number six AWG wire to the grounding rods.
job, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. So here's Greg's station at the end of the competition. And here is Seth's station. And here's Will's station. Here's Lee's station. And here's Clay's station. All of these gentlemen did a great job and really did a lot of work in a short amount of time. Now it's time for the judges to take over and look at every little aspect and make their decision. Now speed is only 10% of who they decide wins. And here is the awards ceremony. I'll put links in my video description for the SK adjustable 3 8 inch torque wrench which can torque between 30 and 250 foot pounds and for the SK adjustable torque wrench which can torque between 10 and 100 foot pounds. I'll put a link for the ideal magnetic 6 inch electrician's level, the ideal ratcheting cable cutter, the ideal 12 inch adjustable pliers, the ideal TKO carbide hole saws, and for ideal wire armor electrician's tape. I'll also put links for tools seen in the previous rounds, such as the ideal ductile iron conduit benders and the ideal tracer systems. I hope you enjoyed the competition. Thanks for watching!